Hey everybody and welcome to The Breakdown with D Malone. So today we are talking about fear. And this is kind of a two-parter. And I call it the fear factor, but today's lesson is called Fear for Your Life. And it is spotlighting fear. And then we're going to be talking about Abraham. And so I want to really get into this and I want to unpack it because it is so interesting to me, um, just all of the parts of it and just the way that the fear affected him. Um, I want us to really kind of like understand and, and just get down deep into what was going on with him. And so before we really get into it, I just want us to pray. Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Father God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you are about to do. Father, I thank you so much for the people that are watching and that are listening. I pray, Lord God, that you unclog their ears, open up their hearts, their minds, and their eyes, that they would be receptive to what it is that you are saying and that they would apply it to their lives. For you say, Lord God, that we should be the doer of the words and not just the hearer. So bless your holy word, Lord God. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. Lord, I ask that you just use me in this very moment. In your name, Jesus, amen. So let's go right into the scripture, which is uh, Genesis chapter 12. And we're going to go straight to verse 11 through 13. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it from my phone. So it reads as such. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarah, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you're my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let me make sure I say that. Um, what, Abraham? Abram and Sarai, what is fear? So the dictionary says, Fear, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or a threat. So yeah, that sounds about what Abraham was feeling, Abram was feeling. Now that we've discussed what fear is, let's un go back to the beginning of this chapter. So the Lord speaks to Abram and he says to him, I'm going to make you the father of many nations i'm going to give you a nation um i'm going to give you a, a child and your child will inherit the land so i'm giving you this land and uh he tells him that he's gonna make him famous okay so now leave here so you're gonna take your wife and you he took his nephew lot and he took them and so he left his the rest of his family took everything that he had and he left, you know, the other people in, in, on the land, he left them behind. Okay, now, as soon as God gave him that word, God said, go to the land that I will show you. Abraham was obedient. Like, he didn't say a word. He didn't question the Lord. Nothing. He just did it. And that's great. You, a man of great faith. That That's who Abram is. And so... With this promise, he, I felt should have been secure because as soon as the Lord told him, he was up and out. He left. He took Sarai. Lot went with him. They were on their way. And when they got into Negev, there was a famine there, so they headed out and went to Egypt. Now, they get to Egypt, but before they go into Egypt, this is when this conversation happens. So listen, he says, look, you're beautiful and I know it 
And as soon as they see it, they're going to know it. And they're going to kill me because of, you know, what I look like. And they're not going to believe that you are my wife. So do me the favor. You love me, right? If you love me, tell them you're my sister. On the flip side of that, I'm wondering, what is Lot thinking? Like, yo, Unc, you tripping. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, so he says, tell them this, and they're going to treat me well, and they won't kill me. We'll both get to live. Right? That that was the selling point. We'll both get to live. Bruh. Um, what? And so what happens is they get close. Right? They're in Egypt, I should say. And the pharaohs, uh, people come out and they're like, oh, she's beautiful. Then they go and tell Pharaoh. The next thing you know, he literally says, this is my sister. <laughs> you can have her. She's my sister. And as soon as she's taken into the palace, uh, Pharaoh gives him things. He's getting cattle. He's getting donkeys. He gets male and female servants. Okay, so he is treated well. He gets riches, all that good stuff. But a plague comes over Pharaoh and his family. And the Lord appears to him as like, bruh, you need to let her go. Because this ain't going to look good for you. I'm paraphrasing. Okay, so now he finds out that Sarah is actually Abram's wife. And he's like, yo, bro, why are you telling me that was your sister and that's really your wife? Like, why would you do that to me? What I, I don't I don't get it. And Abraham says, Well, you know, uh you you guys, I thought you were uh, you know not a God fearing place, and I just automatically assumed you would kill me. And Pharaoh's like, yo, get out leave you can go matter of fact take everything i gave you everything you came with just hit the road leave okay he leaves now you would think though this is again chapter 12 we get to 20 <laughs> he does the same exact thing he tells king abimelech that sarai is his sister and King Abimelech takes her in because she is gorgeous. And the family, the women in the family, their wombs get shut up. And the Lord tells Abimelech, that does not, that woman does not belong to you. That is his wife. Now Abimelech's like, bruh, why did you lie? Like, why didn't you just tell me the truth that this is your wife and not your sister? You, you just, you almost got me killed. Because that's what the Lord told him, that he would kill him if he touched her. So, Abraham gives him the same thing. Well, I thought you guys weren't God-fearing, and so I thought you'd kill me. Bruh, listen, this is what I'm going to do for you. You can live in Gerar, but you cannot live in his palace, and I don't want nothing to do with your wife. See ya. And you could go. And so as soon as they leave the palace, they do as the Lord commanded. His wife was able to have a baby. The rest of the women, their wombs were open again. And But can you guys imagine like how the king was feeling like, bruh, what, what, what just happened? I almost died because of your lie. So, listen, I want to help us um, with like five points to keep us from having this fear. Um, because for one, God did not give us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of love and sound mind. First thing I want us to do is I want us to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And see, I don't think that Abraham trusted in the Lord. Like he got this promise and I think he forgot about that promise. And instead of him just facing the fear that he came up with, he decided to 
be selfish. See, the trust part is already like hard, right? Because sometimes we allow our circumstances to guide us and make us, you know, lose our trust in the Lord. But now you looking at the circumstances and now you coming up with your own things and your 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 own ways to fix the situation. No. Let's lean on what God says, right? Lean on the everlasting arm. I do love that song. Anyway, um, we want to trust that God has got us because he does. He's telling us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You do not have to have fear because perfect love casts out fear. And if you love me, then you wouldn't be afraid. And then the other thing I want us to do is I want us to face our fears. I can understand sometimes when, you know, you're, uh, you get a little nervous. Let's say you got to sing somewhere or you've got to do a presentation at work. I get the nerves, but you got to face that thing. You got to tell that thing. I got this. You got to be strong, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of God. The word of God says, do not be afraid. Be courageous. So be courageous means face your fears. So the other thing that I want us to do is I want us to question that fear. Where did this fear come from? Where is it founded? Is it somebody else's fear imposed on my heart? And now I believe that fear? Because that too can happen. And then it's, it's embedded in your heart. And now you're afraid to do it because somebody else didn't make it or, you know, something like that. So I want us to question where the fear comes from so that we can, we can banish it when we know where it's coming from. Let's say it's an insecurity like Abraham. Abraham was super insecure and that caused him to have that fear muster up in his heart and explode out of his face with a lie. And then the last thing is do not lie don't add a lie to a situation because the lie affects more than just you the lie makes the situation 10 times worse now abram thought about this lie now you got pharaoh that was affected and his family then you got king abimelech that's affected and his family and of course sarai is affected no, we don't want to do that. So let's 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 work on those things so that we could get in the space of losing the sphere. Getting your relationship closer to God gives you that perfect love. That way you don't have any fear because God is so trustworthy. God is so reliable. God is so loving and caring. And he's a great father. What are we afraid of? What could mere mortals do to you? When you lie out of fear of punishment, what could those people do to you? Okay, you get fired. You probably deserve to be fired. So I love you. Let's, let's lose the fear. I will see you next week with fear part two. I hope you uh, are blessed by this fear factor. And this actually, this series was called Fear for Your Life um, in case you missed it. And um, the live will be up on YouTube, D Malone's World. And I am D's on the Spot Nails on Instagram and Darlene Malone on Facebook. Let's get together. Let's. Let's do this. I love you so much. Bye-bye.